Hey, how's it going everybody? Today we're going to be talking about continuity. Now continuity is going to be really important for us because nearly all calculus operations assume the function that you're working on is continuous. So without further ado, let's dive into what makes a function continuous, how we can determine if it is continuous, and what exactly all this implies. Now let's talk about the idea behind what makes a function continuous. Now behind me, you can see three different examples of three different functions that also somewhat look pretty different. Now in the first example, at negative one, it looks like I have a hole. In the second example, nothing really up with it, just seems kind of like a smooth function, maybe a shift of x cubed. And last but not least, the third function, we have a vertical asymptote at negative one. Now there seems to be something pretty inherently different between these two graphs and last but not least the middle graph. And this is actually going to be the idea behind continuity. One way you could capture these differences, which works especially well for our class, would be that while drawing the second one, you did not have to lift up your pencil. While drawing the other two, the outside ones, there were points in which you did have to lift up the pencil. This is actually going to be our first intuitive idea of what continuity is. A function is continuous if you don't lift your pencil while drawing it. Now we can see that all of the problem points in the first and third example come when at x equals negative 1, where we did have to lift our pencil. These points where you do have to lift your pencil are points of discontinuity. So a point of discontinuity, meaning not continuous, occurs when you do, meaning when you do lift your pencil. So some of these functions are continuous in spots. For instance, over here, this right here would not be a point of discontinuity. So I am actually continuous at this point. However, the entire function is not continuous because I have a single point of discontinuity. A continuous function is just a function with zero points of discontinuity. Now that we've seen pictures and got the kind of idea of what continuity means on a graphing level, let's talk about how we can formally define it. That way we can unload our limit tools on it to really see if a function is continuous. All right, so without further ado, a function is continuous at a point x equals a. Now remember with continuity, we're always talking about whether a function is continuous at a single point or not. So we're continuous at this point x equals a if these three things hold. One, f of a is defined. A function is only continuous if you have a point to put there. Two, the limit as x approaches a of our function exists. Well, we need kind of the sides to agree. And last but not least, if the function value actually equals the limit of the function as we approach that point a. Now let's dive into what these actually mean and what they actually prevent from being continuous. So this first criterion, f of a is defined. What this is going to prevent is twofold. This will prevent functions who have a hole at x equals a. It will also prevent functions where we have a vertical asymptote at x equals a. Now the second criterion tells me that the limit has to exist. The main one that this is going to prevent is going to be functions where on one side we're kind of trending towards something else and the other side we trend towards something completely different. So this is going to be functions that quote unquote jump. And an example of that might be something kind of like this. Drawing a quick one, you'll see it will have a green line way up here, maybe an open dot and a closed dot way down here. This would be the jump that I'm talking about where we just completely change elevations. Last but not least, f of a equals the limit of f of x as x approaches a is going to prevent situations and this one's maybe just easy as shown during a graph where we have a point, 
So we do have a value, we have a closed dot, maybe right here, but we have a function that looks something like this. Now remember the limit of f of x as x approaches a only exists if the limit from the left hand side and the right hand side agree. In this case right here, the limit from the left hand side and the limit from the right hand side both line up on the same value. However, the function value, f of a, happens to be way up here. So the limit and the function would not agree. So these are kind of the things that we get prevented from being continuous, which makes sense that you'd have to lift up your pencil. And these are the formal rules. Now let's dive into an example so we can see the particulars about how to really work with this type of definition. All right, let's go ahead and try an example of determining whether a function is continuous at a given point. Now just for a reminder's sake, I, I gave us a checklist of what we really have to check for a function to be continuous at the given point. Now remember that's as follows. One, does the function exist? Is it defined at that point? Two, does the limit exist as we approach that point? Which means we're going to have to do from the left and right. Last but not least, does our function value actually equal what the limit told us? All right, so without further ado, is the function f of x where f of x equals x minus 3 divided by x minus 2, continuous at the following points. Case A, x equals 4. Now you've probably noticed behind me, I've, driven, I've gone ahead and drawn up the function so that we can just kind of visually check that our algebra gives us the right answer. However, just for a little go-ahead look, at x equals 4, that's way out here, I didn't have to lift up my pencil. So that would more than likely tell me my answer is going to be continuous at x equals 4. Let's dive in though. Okay, number one, is my function defined? How we test this out is just plug in the dang number, f of 4. Now this thing equals 4 minus 3 all over 4 minus 2. We'll get a 1 on top and a 2 on bottom. So f of 4 equals 1 half, my function is defined. Step 1 is okay. Step 2, what's the limit as x approaches the number of interest of my function? Well, if you remember last um, video, all we had to do since we have a rational function in order to test out this limit is just plug the dang number in. So nothing fancy going on right here. Just plug the dang number into our function. So this would just be 4 minus 3 over 4 minus 2, which yet again gives me 1 half. Now, step 3 can be summarized as follows. Does step 1's answer equal step 2's answer? So oftentimes with step 3, I like to just put a check mark. However, for formality's sake, we will write that excuse me, I'll keep it how it's going over there, f of 4 equals the limit as x approaches 4 of my function. So it does equal, otherwise I'd have a slash through. So in, set, or in case a, at x equals 4, we have a continuous function. Put an exclamation point, we're happy about that. And like you said, you can use a graph as evidence. Now, option B down here, case B, is it continuous at x equals 2? Yet again, we'd want to run through our formal checklist. So, starting it off. The first one, is f of your number defined? Well, plugging in 2 to our function, well, I guess we get 2 minus 3 on top, all over 2 minus 2, giving us a negative 1 over 0. Now, as we said last video, any non-zero number divided by 0 leads us to a vertical asymptote. So technically, we're not defined. And as you can see on the graph, there is a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. This is a point of discontinuity. So once you fail one of them, you're off free. It's discontinuous at that point. You have to satisfy all of them in order to be continuous. So since we failed number one, we will say D 
discontinuous. So that's how this works. We'll get to a little bit more complicated one that we'll um, do in the next slide. That's going to be mostly what your homework is. All right, now let's bump up to a piecewise function. Now before we get there, I do want to make an additional comment. If you're ever dealing with a polynomial function, it turns out that you're going to be continuous everywhere. There's no problem points. What if you're dealing with a rational function, meaning a polynomial divided by a polynomial, last example, it turns out you'll only be discontinuous when the bottom equals zero. Those are going to be your problem points, your vertical asymptotes, or your removable discontinuities where there's a hole in the graph. Everywhere else you'll be continuous. Piecewise functions now turn out to be a little bit more interesting and perhaps a little bit more difficult to handle, so let's try it. Is the function f of x equals x squared minus 4 when x is less than or equal to 0, and 3 quarters x squared minus 3 when x is greater than 0, continuous at the point x equals 0? So I remember a little bit about these piecewise functions. This is the rule that we're going to follow when x is less than or equal to 0, while this is the rule that we're going to follow while x is greater than 0. That's going to bring up more important, um, a little bit more of a conversation when limits come into the picture. Now let's remember our process. First step. Is f of 0 defined? Now with piecewise functions, this requires us knowing where to plug 0 in. We're going to plug this into the top rule because that's included, 0 is included in this domain. So f of 0 really equals 0 squared minus 4 or just negative 4. Second thing, what is the limit as x approaches 0 of my function? What is this thing equal? Now I'm going to leave this blank. I'm going to just draw a little line right here. Now we're going to come back to fill in if this limit actually equals something. Now the only way this limit actually exists is if the limit from the left hand side equals the limit from the right hand side. So we got two things to test out. Part A. Let's check out the limit from the left hand side. The limit as x approaches 0 from the left hand side of my function. Now this is kind of a cool part of the problem. Right now we have two rules that we could really pick from. But let's remember what the limit from the left hand side actually means. This means that we're going to guesstimate where the y value should be based only on points to the left of 0, kind of walking up to 0 from the left. Now if you're to the left of 0, that means you're less than 0, which means we're in this domain right here. So we can actually get a specific rule going for f of x. To the left of 0, we're only caring about this top function because this says all values to the left and including 0. So, let's fill that in. This is just the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of my top function, x squared minus 4. Once you're here, just use your limit laws. Our first step with limits was just to plug the dang number in. And we're just going to go ahead and do that. 0 squared minus 4 gives me a negative 4. So the limit from the left hand side equals negative 4. Now let's tackle the limit from the right hand side. So far all is well. Negative 4 here, negative 4 there. Let's see if that carries over. The limit as x approaches 0 from the right hand side of my function, well due to similar reasoning, if you're to the right of 0, like this right-hand limit implies, that means you're greater than 0, which means you're totally captured in this domain, the bottom domain. Well, if you're totally captured in the bottom domain, that means you're going to be totally using only this rule, the 3 quarters x squared minus 3. So our function is only going to look like that to the right of 0. So let's fill in the rule. So 3 quarters x squared minus 3, excuse me, that looks like a question mark, is going to be our function. Now remembering our limit laws, all we do is plug the dang number in. 3 quarters times 0 squared minus 3, doing some algebra, will just give me a minus 3. Now it's important to look right now. 
we did the limit from the left and the limit from the right. If the left and right do not agree, the limit will not exist. The only way this thing exists is if these guys land on a common value, in which case we'll call that the limit. In this case, from the left, we get negative 4. From the right, we get negative 3. So this means that the limit does not exist. Well, even though 1 passed, it looks like condition number 2 failed. So once you fail one condition, go ahead and drop your pen, you're done. Since one of them failed, our answer will be discontinuous. And technically, we're only discontinuous as far as this is shown at x equals 0. Hey y'all, thanks for tuning in today on our little mini video on continuity and when a function is continuous or not. Now some important ideas to leave you on. Graphically speaking, a function is going to be continuous at a point if you do not have to lift up your pencil while drawing through that point. This rules out a lot of functions right away, for instance, vert ones with vertical asymptotes and ones with holes in the graph. Now, a function is going to be continuous everywhere if you have zero points of discontinuity. So we'll call a total function continuous if you can draw the entire thing without lifting your pencil. An important class of continuous functions would be polynomials. Rational functions, while they might be mostly continuous, will always have points of discontinuity when the bottom equals zero. Now, as far as a working definition goes, a function f of x is going to be continuous at a point x equals a if and only if the following three things hold. One, the point is actually defined. We can actually get a value when we plug in the point of interest to our function. Two, the limit as x approaches a, our point of interest, of our function actually exists. Now remember, this thing is often broken down into two steps. Step A would be what's the limit from the left hand side. Step B would be what's the limit from the right hand side. This thing only exists if the left hand limit and the right hand limit agree. Last but not least, step three is often just thought of as a check, is the function value equal to the limit value. If they really are, if all three of these hold, then you do have a continuous function. If just one of them fails, then you have a discontinuous function at that point x equals a. So, good luck with the homework. Come to me if you have absolutely any questions, and good luck.